You better look deep. This occult stuff is real. I know my rights. I know my rights. I'm a child of God. Ah, I know my rights. God dang it. Dear sisters and brothers, we are slaves. We are being exploited in every possible way. We live under an economical system that transfer the wealth from the people to the pockets of the elites. Sadly, most of the population are still unaware of how the 1% are looting the rest of us. It's for this reason that in this video, I will reveal few of the many ways in which the New World Order elites are discreetly extracting our wealth. Yes, and the fact of the matter is that the re there's a refusal on both the Democratic and the Republican side of the aisle to acknowledge the mathematical problem, which is that the United States of America is being extracted. It's being extracted through banking, it's being extracted through trade, and it's being extracted through taxation. And there's not a single politician that has stepped forward, Susan, to deal with this. We could live in a world where the countries could issue their own money free of interests. But instead, a private banking cartel, through wars, threats, bribes, and murders, have taken over the issuance of currency, turning money into debt, and demanding it to be paid back with interests. That means, an important part of the taxes you pay, wouldn't need to be paid, if your government could issue its own money free of interests. It's expected that in the next 10 years, United States will have to pay more than 4 trillions in interests. Can you imagine all the things that US could build with all this money? The interests are the weapon the bankers use to steal our wealth and bankrupt our nations. In the past, two US presidents, Kennedy and Lincoln, gave the power to issue money to the Congress. But they both got killed and their reforms avoided. Got all this stuff, the Fed just shouldn't exist. You believe the same thing, make the case. Well, for the, for the f first, first reason is it's not authorized in the Constitution, so it's, not, it's an illegal institution. And the second reason it's an immoral institution because we have delivered to a secretive body the privilege of creating money out of thin air. If you or I did it, we'd be called counterfeiters. So why have we legalized counterfeiting? Central banks are private, corrupt, and non-transparent institutions who use their power to issue money to enrich themselves and their close friends? Why should society give the power to create something as important as currency to a private institution which is accountable to anyone? Isn't that stupid? Let's see what kind of things occur when you let this happen. Well, I have a copy of the Inspector General Act here in front of me, and it says, among other things, that it's your responsibility to conduct and supervise audits and investigations relating to the programs and operations of your agency. That's correct. So I'm asking you if your agency has, in fact, according to Bloomberg, extended $9 trillion in credit, which, by the way, works out to $30,000 for every single man, woman, and child in this country. I'd like to know, if you're not responsible for investigating that, who is? That we actually... We have responsibility for the Federal Reserve's programs and operations audits to conduct audits and investigations in that area. Um, in terms of who's responsible for investigating, would you mind repeating the question one more time? What have you done to investigate the off-balance sheet transactions conducted by the Federal Reserve, which according to Bloomberg now total $9 trillion in the last eight months? I'll have to look specifically at that Bloomberg article. I, I'm not, um, I, I don't know if I have actually seen that particular one. That's not the point. The question is, have you done any investigation or auditing of off-balance sheet transactions conducted by the Federal Reserve? At this point, we're at the very, we're conducting our lending facility project at a fairly high level and have not gotten to a specific level of detail to really be in a position to respond to your question. Have you conducted any investigation or auditing of the losses that the Federal Reserve has experienced on its lending since last September? We're still in the process of conducting that review. Until we actually, you know, go out and, and gather the information, I'm not in a position to really respond to, to the specific question. So are you telling me that nobody at the Federal Reserve is keeping track on a regular basis of the losses that it incurs on what is now a $2 trillion portfolio? I don't know if you're, you're telling me that there, you're mentioning that there's losses. I'm just saying that we're not 
until we actually look at the program and have the information, we are not in a position to say whether there are losses or to respond in any other way to that. Mr. Chairman, my, my time is up, but I have to tell you honestly, I am shocked to find out that nobody at the Federal Reserve, including the Inspector General, is keeping track of this. Another way in which the central banks extract the wealth of the people is through controlling the monetary policies, through regulating the ease of credit, the money supply, the interest rates. The banks can create periods of expansion and recession, and it's during this economic downturns when most of debtors cannot pay back their debts and have their assets confiscated by the banks that's one of the reasons why during recessions the rich get richer and the poor get poorer people sort of thought that maybe um, this this collapse might be an opportunity to sort of redress problems and and that things will get more fair and the, and the rich would get less rich and so on but in fact usually when financial collapses or depressions happen <clears throat> historically um, the banks that come out on top wind up getting a lot stronger than they ever were. The rich who are not in debt but actually hold debt um, uh, and can squeeze because they have the, the means of being able to squeeze that debt out, they get much, much richer. Then there are now, you know, think about all the, foreclose, uh, all the foreclosures out there. I think there are supposedly maybe another four million homes waiting right, to go into foreclosure. That's going to be somebody's property, and it's not going to be 4 million people's property. One of the biggest problems we have nowadays is that our governments, who are controlled by the financial elites, have created faulty fiscal policies that allow the big banks and corporations to evade paying taxes and stash their money offshore. The amount of money hidden is mind-blowing. A 2012 report from Tax Justice Network estimated that there was between 20 and 32 trillions of dollars stashed in tax havens. It's appalling that governments allow this to happen. Can you imagine all the things that could be built if this wealth was invested in the real economy? In fact, if our governments are becoming so poor and are forced to cut down on social expenses and privatize public services, it's in part because the wealth of our nations is being extracted by the super rich. We have become cattle, we are exploited, and the wealth we produce is appropriated by our farmers, the New World Order elites. Um, recent studies uh, have indicated, in Africa at least, that the private assets, the assets held by Africans, far outseed the debts of African countries. The difference is that the assets are held in private hands. These are assets offshore in, in, in banks overseas. Uh, they could easily pay off the debts. Uh, the income on those assets could easily pay off uh, you know, all the debt repayments. But we have this mismatch and, and the burden is that the, the, the debts are borne by the African people in the form of either higher taxes for themselves or degraded public services and impun an, an elite that, that benefits from complete impunity for what they're doing. The money's offshore. There's, uh, there's nothing that anybody can do about it and this leads to the corruption of countries and uh, wholesale subversion of democracy so it's a it's an absolute scourge on developing countries not only we are being looted by the banks but we also bail them out when their bad practices led them to bankruptcy how idiot is that to go bankrupt is part of the risk of running a business why we should bail them out during the 2008 crisis our governments have given trillions to the banks can you imagine if we had invested this money in building infrastructure for our society? Now our governments have become so indebted to save the banks, that they do not even have money to look after the citizens. We're talking about $80,000 for every single American. Imagine if, if you're going to do a bailout, if that money had gone to the people directly instead of going to the banks who just hoarded it and bought up competitors with it. They had no incentive to refinance mortgages or refinance loans of any kind. They just kept the money, gave themselves bonuses, bought up competitors, and are sitting pretty. And they're not loaning money. People are still broke. And the economy is still in a recession and will be. And on top of that, they've inflated the dollar by the government printing up money, took our taxes, and gave it to banks who loan it back to us with interest. Besides, according to a new law passed recently, in the next crisis, the banks will have the right to seize the money of the depositors to prevent bankruptcy. So you have been warned, make sure you don't have tens of thousands of dollars deposited in bank accounts or you run the risk to lose most of it when the next derivative bubble will burst.
Another way to loot the resources of a country, is through implanting structural adjustment reforms. When a country have a crisis of debt, the International Monetary Fund, and World Bank, can act as lenders of last resort, but in exchange, they will demand the country to do some reforms, which entail privatizations, devaluation of currency, cut subsidies to local industries, remove tariffs, banking restructuration, which are reforms that will deliberately impoverish the country, and allow foreign private corporations to enter in the markets, and loot the country's resources. We economic hitmen really have been the ones responsible for creating this first truly global empire. And we work many different ways. But perhaps the most common is that we will identify a, a country that has resources our corporations covet, like oil, and then arrange a huge loan to that country from the World Bank or one of its sister organizations. But the money never actually goes to the country. Instead, it goes to our big corporations to build infrastructure projects in that country, power plants, industrial parks, ports, things that benefit a few rich people in that country, in addition to our corporations, but really don't help the majority of the people at all. However, those people, the whole country is left holding a huge debt. It's such a big debt they can't repay it, and that's part of the plan that they can't repay it. And so at some point, we economic hitmen go back to them and say, listen, you lost a lot of money, can't pay your debt, so sell your oil, real cheap to our oil companies. Allow us to build a military base in your country or send troops in support of ours to some place in the world like Iraq or vote with us on the next UN vote to have their electric utility company privatized and their water and sewage system privatized and sold to U.S. corporations or other multinational corporations. So there was a whole mushrooming thing and it's so typical of the way the IMF and the World Bank work. They put a country in debt, and it's such a big debt it can't pay it, and then you offer to refinance that debt and, and, and pay even more interest. And you demand this quid pro quo, which you call a conditionality or good governance, which means basically that they've got to sell off their resources, in, in, including many of their social services, their utility companies, their school systems sometimes, their, their, their penal systems, their insurance systems, to foreign corporations. Another tool used by corporations to enslave humanity are the free trade agreements. This trade deals are really damaging for our economies and for the people for many reasons. They promote a race to the bottom in labor rights and environmental regulations. Free trade destroy entire economies. Since factories move to countries with cheaper labor, only in the United States, millions of jobs have been lost. Free trade removes tariff barriers, which wipes out industries and impoverish farmers from third world countries. Since they cannot compete with the subsidized products from the West, free trade allows transnational corporations to evade taxes easily. And to make things worse, most of the trade deals come with a clause that allow foreign investors to sue the countries if they approve any regulation that can undermine the earnings of corporations. Let's see some examples that show cases of governments being sued and forced to pay generous compensations to the corporations or forced to repeal their regulations. Among other things, corporations are suing to block a raising of the minimum wage, block health protection measures, overturn a ban on toxic waste dumping in a drinking water area, block compensation for victims of apartheid, block the repeal of water privatization, or block the terms of bank bailouts. As we have seen dear sisters and brothers, the elites have created an economical order that extract the wealth of the 99% and give it to the 1%. We could live in a world where we all could be rich, but instead, half of the world population subsist for less than $2 a day, while others earn millions a day. I hope this video have helped the viewer to realize that we are being enslaved, and unless we stand up, Dark times will await for us. We are anonymous. We do not forgive. And we do not forget. So, expect us. Well, I'm not gonna leave you alone. I want you to get mad. And 
want you to protest. I don't want you to ride. I don't want you to write to your congressmen because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. Everything that gets into your brain affects your reality tunnel, your worldview, or your belief system, which I abbreviate BS. The, the, two, the, the, the three major things I've been trying to teach in all of my books is never believe fully in anybody else's BS. I don't care if it's Roger Nish, the Pope, L. Ron Hubbard, Al Gore, George Bush, or I don't care who it is. Don't, don't, don't swallow all their belief system totally. Don't, don't accept all of their bullshit, their, all their BS. The second rule is like unto the first. Don't believe totally in your own BS. Which means that, as Bucky Fuller said, the universe consists of non-simultaneously apprehended events. Non-simultaneously. The universe consists of non-simultaneously apprehended events, which means any belief system or reality tunnel you've got right now is going to have to be revised and updated as you continue to apprehend new events later in time, not simultaneously. Or as I would say, you know, beliefs are a substitute for knowing. They're just mind viruses. So I'm, I'm sharing a couple of these um, talks and, and people quoting and stuff because um, it was part of my journey and um, I mean these these people are the be all and end all but a lot, a lot of things that are said you know for me help to, to trigger and help me to move on progress within my own mind um, so by, by no means are any of these people you know the be all and end all and obviously you know guys like Anton Wilson and Jack Fresco who I'll, I'll put on at the end of this, this um, talk um, you, you know, a lot, a lot of these things are coming from a place of thinking that you live on a globe. And as I've said many times, you know, a lot of these things change. You know, you, your whole paradigm, your whole way of thinking can shift, you know, because the foundations you have were false. So, um, again, you, you know, I'm not resting on any of these things. You know, for me, there's... The, the whole game just seems to be rigged to, to stop you from exploring. There's something significant there. Um, and I know I'm like a broken down record when I say it, but, you know, for me, that's it. <clears throat> Until we can establish where we are, all these ideas about life, you know, are just pissing in the wind. So, <clears throat> you know, that's, you know, I've wrote down here that, you know, that's where they're coming from. You know, they're trying to work out and come to, come to conclusions based on where they are, where they think they are, um, you know, but, you know, a lot of their points are brilliant and spot on as far as how we're thinking and stuff, so, um, what was I going to say here, yeah, um, and that was just basically it, you know, beliefs are a substitute for knowing. You know, don't believe anything. You know, we don't have to believe things. We can find out. You know, you've got that the tools. You've got you've you've got the questions. You have the ability to question. So for me, you know, if I'm questioning what is this place, you know, for me there's there's an avenue to find out what this place is, where we are, and why we're here. And um, don't let anybody try and take you away from that. You know, as I say, the whole game for me is, to, is rigged to keep you in bewilderment and ignorance. You know, as long as you think you've got a grasp, then that's fine. You know, you'll just continue to accept the programs or the, you know, the ways of life that are put in front of you. You know, and I don't want to speak for too long because the bit of the Jack Fresco bit I'm going to put on at the end is 40 minutes. But I encourage people to listen to what the, the, the man has to say. He's a very wise man. Um, you know, obviously, I, you know, I don't take everything that he says. You know, there's, there's things that he says that I don't agree with. Um, where he stands on the whole thing about where we live, I don't know, um, and whether or not he would, even, you know, he would take any stance in order to protect his, his thing called the Venus Project. Um, you know, and I, I started looking at the Venus Project. You know, you hear about this, all these doomsday seers and stuff, um, that the New World Order, and you know, it's totalitarian, people are going to be stamped on, you're going to be oppressed, you know, in total control. Well, for me, that already exists. So, 
if you, if you're talking about new world order, a one world religion, a one world government, you know, if if controllers and manipulators want to achieve that, you know, they're not going to want to achieve that with the whole populace being up in arms and and hating them, and you know, they're going to have to offer something feasible, something different, something like the Venus Project. Now, if you look into the Venus Project, it's been here for a long time. You know, I even you know you can see an interview with, with Jack Fresco and. Um, is it, is it Letterman or something? I can't remember exactly, but you, you'll find it if you look for it. You know, and that's been for the 70s. I'm not going to say too much about what the Venus Project is, but it's basically a resource-based economy. Now, if I'm manipulating and I'm c controlling and I want to keep everybody in control, um, once I build everything up into a crescendo, the Venus Project would be something that you, that, that you could offer. You know, a way of life for people that they would maybe jump on and accept because, you know, it's about resources, it's, it's not about working, slaving your ass off. Um, again, I'm not going to say too much about it, I encourage you to look into it yourself. Um, but, as I say, you know, if there's a plan for a new world order and a, you know, all that, that stuff, the whole conspiracy thing, and again, I'll reiterate that for me that already exists. You know, it's not something that's going to begin at a certain date, it's here, that you're already living in that. But they know people are going to get to a point of awakening because they just can't take it anymore. So if they want to maintain control, they're going to have to offer in, you know, different ways of life. And the Venus Project, for me, could be one of the ways of life. No a doomsday thing, you know, something that people will jump on board with and, oh, progression. As long as people only think, let's explore the full, the full area, you know. So, and again, I don't agree with everything that the guy says, but he's a really clever old man, you know, and he, and he helped me, some of the things he said, you know, and that's the whole thing about this whole conspiracy thing, many of the things that I learned about, you know, it wasn't about um, retaining all that information, you know, you just had to perceive things in a different way, or the information that was being put to you would open up new avenues in your mind, and that was it, they were like keys, as long as the keys to new perceptions opened the, the doorways up, that was it. You know, I didn't have to dwell on what David Icke said or what any of these philosophers said or anybody else said. You know, if they said something that made me see things in a new perspective, then that was it. The, the, the door was opened and that, that's fine. You know, you let it go. Um, because again, there's a lot of things in that that are just unproven and, you know, it's just philosophy, which again is based on, for me, we don't know where we are and, oh, what's it all about, you know, let's clutch at straws and make stuff up. You know, it's fucking nonsense. Um, so, although, you, you know, and, and when, I, when I share the Jack Fresco thing, again, if it turns out that we're confined here and this is the only place that we can live together, then the Venus Project for me would be something that would, you know, I could go on board with. But, um, again, I don't think, you know, that's the be all and end all. You know, it's not about us trying to figure out how we live here together. There's something else there to be discovered. Um, and I've said it before, even to religious people, you know, you talk about ideas about God. You know, the only way I could get on board with a God is if he wanted equals, right? Now, if he wants equals, then, you know, you have to learn everything yourself, you know. And, you know, if your God might be waiting for you to realise the game, to leave the fucking trap, you know, to go there. Who knows, you know, you know, the whole talk about God and what it means is a, is a whole other subject. I'm not going to get in that avenue. Um, but before I share that, that last video, um, there's a couple of things. Um, you know, I've kind of pulled back recently. You know, I've not been chatting to people so much. You know, I've had other things going on in my life. So I, I apologise for that. Um, you know, sometimes you just need to take time and get things in perspective. It's, it's quite a draining process and, you know, that, that's another subject that, you know, my wee mate Stuart, you know, I was talking to him the other night and, you know, he's like me, he's at a place of total disillusionment and, sorry, I need to, there's somebody coming with a parcel here, I apologise. Alex, here's every time I'm meeting with you, you always... No, you just came in the door there, mate. Oh, did you just come there this week? Aye. Alright, I had a wee letter thing. Okay. Alright, thank you very much mate. Um, sorry about that. Um, so, 
you know, I was talking to Reece Stewart and, you know, he's like me, he's, he's, you know, talking about, you know, not having any motivation, you know, waiting for, you know, because at the end of the day, you, you get to that point where it's the whole thing, you become disillusioned by it, you know, what am I contributing to, why, you know, what is this society, where are we working towards, you know, and I've always said that to people, you know, where is everybody trying to go, at the end of the day, we're here, um, you know, it, it, none of it makes any sense, it makes more sense for me that we're born here and you progress and you keep exploring and you move on and you move on. You don't get running in circles repeating the same nonsense, regurgitated as something else. You know, that's just insanity. So, you know, I'm guessing that there's a lot of people out there that feel that way. And I'm, you know, I'm the same, you know, just restless with it. You know, like, where do I put my attention? Where do I put my time into? Obviously my kids, but even I look at them and I'm saying, you know, I, I've, I've contributed to bringing you here, you know. What is this fucking place? You know, and, and, you know, when I see, like, my mate, like, Stuart, you know, and other people feeling that, you know, the time has come now. We, we need to know where we are. This is getting beyond a fucking joke now. Um, we don't need to live in ignorance. We don't need to live in bewilderment. Right? And I get it. I'm no one to contribute to this whole fucking thing. You know, because it's just crap. It's unfair. Unbalanced. So, you know, if there's people out there that feel that way, then, you know, the, the rest is, well, no, the rest is, but there is others who feel the exact same way, um, you know, sitting, waiting, you know, and, and I even say that, he's, you know, I say that he's sure, you know, sometimes I get to the moments where I think, do you know what, I hope there is a higher intelligence or some sort of mind that's going to come and make this better because it's a fucking nightmare, but, you know, I'm not going to rest on that, you know, you get the weak moments where you, you, you do feel like that. You know, I feel like, you know, we can get ourselves out of this and it's not as hard as people I think it's going to be. You know, I've been constantly trying to put the tools out there and how we can get out of this mess. You know, it's just whether or not people, people see that and people come to that conclusion eventually. You can only hope. Um, and that takes me on to Davy, you know, Antarctic warrior. Um... You know, and he, I seen him yesterday getting pissed off with this research, and it's the, it's the truth. Research, research, research. What are we researching? None of you know where the fuck we are. But all this stuff that's put in front of you is, is just, you know, nonsense. People clambering, people's guesses, disinformation. It's time for it to fucking end. You know, there is no research. Research and understand yourself and understand how things are affecting you and how you're affecting other people. That's fine, you know, but this constantly looking for a book or a saviour or something to tell us where we are, it's not going to fucking happen. We need to unite and stand up together to make that happen. That's just the reality of it. You know, people leaving this, oh, it's end times and the biblical stuff, you know, fuck all that waiting, waiting, waiting. As I say, you know, these manipulators could be playing out this whole biblical thing. You know, build it to a crescendo so that when people are in such a state, they offer you the solution, which could be things like the Venus Project, you know, or um, we're in the dome, we can't get out, it's God's creation, therefore we're all under one religion. You, you know the whole story, you know. I'm not buying any of it. Um, so I totally sympathise with Davey with the, the whole research thing and getting pissed off, and it's great to see you getting pissed off, you know, because that's the truth. And the sooner people come to that, the fucking better. You know, look at the amount of these videos, it's just regurgitating the same fucking crap over and over and over. Nothing taking us anywhere. You know? People say, oh, you want to explore, go and explore yourself. I have not got the resources to go and explore myself. You know, you need people wanting that. You need to convince and offer it to people with something exciting. It is exciting. You know, discovering where we really are. You know, the adventure of life again. You know. So that's great, you know, getting pissed off. You know, I don't know why we're not seeing more channels bigging up exploration. You know, bigging up and being proud to know that we don't know where we are. You know, and not being afraid to admit that and getting rid of all the fucking crap and keeping the message pure and simple. Um... You know, because me, Davey, you know, everybody else who's feeling that way, you know, 
we need that progression. We really need the progression. I need the progression. As I see, everything's just at a standstill for me. You know, and everybody's running around, acting like they've got a grip on life and they know what they're, they're up to and what it's about. And I've said before, that's fine if that's the level they're up. That's just know where I'm at. You know, I've been questioning ever since I was a kid, what is this place and where am I? What is this about? You know, and now that you realise that there's a lie, you know, you know, that a push to, to, to keep that going for whatever reason, you know, people can say it's whatever. For me, it's because there's something significant to discover, you know. That's just what I think. Um, so, you know, I'll just keep this short and sweet. You know, I didn't want to even want it going this long. Um, the point was just to stick the wee Robert Anton Wilson thing in there and then to show people a bit of Jack Fresco who's got some really, really good things to say. Um, you know, and it will be like 40 minutes long, but if you if you listen, you know, it'll, it'll capture you um, and hopefully you get something out of it. So, peace. <laughs>
And the People of America was a bestseller, by the way, in America years ago. And they demanded that the government put in a Pure Food and Drug Administration to check the claims of the drug companies. And they did. They got that in. Now it's run by people of the drug company. Everything becomes corrupt. Everything we touch. So Oppenheimer went to visit Harry Truman, President Harry Truman, and said, look, now that we have an atom bomb, why don't you demonstrate it about 30 miles out at sea so the Japanese can see it, so you won't have to drop it over Japan. Give them a chance to surrender. Harry Truman said, get out of my office. I never want to see you guys again. And he dropped the atom bomb on Hiroshima, Nagasaki, because he was a jackass. Most presidents are very stupid people. They know nothing about ecology, the evolution of society, or have ever, no politician, has ever increased the agricultural yield, made automobiles safer, airplanes safer. What the hell are they doing there? How do they get the job? There's something dreadfully wrong with education. The people in Washington, I can only talk about them, I believe all countries are similar. The people in Washington should know more about human behavior, the latest technologies. They tell you if you want freedom, write your congressman. Why do you have to write him? He should know all those things. When you fly in an airplane, you don't have to write the pilot, so you've been flying at an angle for half an hour, straighten up. <laughs> they know their business. The same for government. They should know everything about modern technology, human behavior, when you put a man in prison, say he stole a watch that cost $150, and it's the fourth time he committed that crime. So you put him in jail for seven years. That's a hell of a lot of watches you can get. <laughs> Figure the cost of that. Feeding him medical care for seven years. Let him have the watch. <laughs> it's much cheaper to give people things they need than to kill them. It's much cheaper. Think of man in jail for life. You know how much that cost? They're worried about the fact that he tried to rob a jewelry store of maybe three or four hundred dollars. It's always cheaper to feed people. And when they go to jail, I can assure you, they don't come out any better. They call them correctional institutes. They don't even know how to correct people. They're not people trained in that area. Then you got a bunch of people they call psychologists. I hope there's none here today and psychiatrists that adjust you to this fucked up culture. How can you adjust people to this culture if you're sane? Do you understand what I mean? So even psychologists and psychiatrists are part of the culture. So is religion. Jesus needs money. Jesus doesn't need anything. God doesn't need anything. They also try to tell you that God so loveth the world that he gave his only begotten son. According to the Bible, it says, they crucified Christ, he arose and ascended into heaven. Where's the sacrifice? <laughs> think about it. So, we don't think about what we read, we just read and we just yak. And so, when we're asked to vote for somebody, we vote for somebody that fits the patterns we've been brought up to accept. Now, during the question period, please, don't be polite. If I say anything you don't understand, say, I don't get it. And if I fail to answer your question, say, you didn't answer my question. Don't be polite. So at the question period, we will examine some of the ideas, and I want you to ask all kinds of naughty questions. Don't accept a thing I say. I don't want you to follow me. I want you to listen to what I say. If it makes sense, do it. If you like the Venus Project, when you leave here, if you don't talk to other people about it, nothing will happen. So if you like what we stand for, look, it's not perfect. It's just a lot better than the society you live in. And it'll continue to get better. There are no final frontiers. People think I'm a utopian. I believe that you can make the best of all possible worlds. I don't. Even if I design a city that works, that city will be a straitjacket to the kids of the future. They'll design their own cities. If you make a statue of me and put it in a city, that holds people back. 
<laughs> in order to move forward, you have to look at things, examine it, improve it, and move on. History is very poor. You don't learn much from it. If you study history exclusively, you won't come up with new ideas. We want to move on. There's no such thing as utopia. Every city I design would be the best I know up to now. And as time goes on, you learn more and the city changes. Nothing can be frozen and kept that way. Everything keeps changing. There are no final frontiers. That's what's the matter with heaven. It's fixed. Everything is the same way. Just consider this. If you went to heaven and you looked down and saw starving kids in Africa, war on earth, would heaven be a peaceful place for you? Absolutely not. There were a bunch of angels that turned against God, so he kicked them all out. They're called the fallen angels. If he didn't have peace up there, how the hell are you going to have it down here? You have to read your Bible and you have to be ruthlessly honest. If you're not honest, it won't work. It says in the Bible, judge not, lest you be judged. That means don't judge anybody. You don't know enough about what made him that way. It also says in the Bible, therefore, by the grace of God, go I. That's anybody you see in a wheelchair, blind, all of us. That can happen to all of us. They don't know what to do about it. In 1927, I came up with a little idea which I got from bats. Bats can fly at night and not hit anything. How do they do it? By sound. So I made a little gadget that would fit over a person's ear and generate sound waves so you can hear an open door even though you're blind. You can hear an object in front of you by sound feedback. So we can build things in all cities so the blind, the blind don't need that white stick or a dog or anything like that. In the meantime, we'll work on artificial systems of vision. I think that human beings can solve any problem. If you don't understand me, I'm not upholding Germany this time. Some people think I do. We formed a blockade to prevent the Germans from getting rubber, but they had enough technicians to make synthetic rubber, so they made all the rubber for their airplanes, everything out of their own chemistry. So, with technicians, not in charge. Understand, I don't want to see science in charge of government or technicians. What I want to see is their assignment to problems such as agriculture. When you, when you can grow food twice as fast on the soil, you exhaust the soil. So we want to know how to grow food faster without exhausting the soil. The United States Army dumped 65 tons of nerve gas into the ocean off the coast of Miami, near the Gulf Stream. How can you love the country if the army did that? They don't know what they're doing. They say, we want you to dump nerve gas. Yes, sir. We don't want obedient people anymore. We want you to understand what's happening. We don't want you to vote for a senator or some other jackass. They are incompetent, all of them. I want you to understand Everything that you have today is your electric lights, your airplanes, your automobiles. You had nothing to do with them. You got them just being born in a country that had that technology. You got it for nothing. I don't think any of you here worked on the electric light or radio or television. Very few people. So you got all that for nothing. Does it hurt you? Of course not. They said, well, you don't want to give people things for nothing, do you? This kid said that to me at Princeton University. Fresco, you want to give people things for nothing. So I said, are you paying your way through college? He said, no, my dad is. I said, does that hurt you? This kid said to me, he still doesn't believe anybody ought to get things for nothing. So I said to him, well, as I understand, your father is wealthy. If he dies, you want his money to go to the heart fund, and the cancer fund, but not to you, because you don't believe anybody ought to get anything for nothing. He said, just a minute now. <laughs> Everybody wants things for nothing. You got the earth for nothing, you were born here, beautiful scenery, clouds, you didn't make any of that. Does it hurt you? Of course not. But when you're born in a polluted world with smog in the air and automobile pollution, say, I guess that's the way it is. It isn't that way. 
is because the people in charge of government are totally incompetent. So what you really want is a world free, free of burden, pain, prisons, police, crime. Can we do that? The church has been trying to do it for years. They don't know how. They have no idea of how to say, be kind, be good. How do you do that? So I wanted my children, two of them, to learn how to read. So I never taught them how to read. I'd open a book at night and I'd read to them in bed. I'd read to them about things kids are interested in. This happened to be my son. He was about four years old. I was reading about dinosaurs. And I said, when the two dinosaurs met, I go, I said, that's all for tonight. I close it. He said, what happened when the dinosaurs met? I said, look, if you learn to read, you can figure it out for yourself. <laughs> and so I gave him a reason to want to read. Don't just teach him to read. Teach him a reason for wanting to learn mathematics. Teach, his, teach you how to read. The dicky dare on, and his sheep. On the way he met a cow. Moo, moo, said the cow. What is that crap? <laughs> and then they have in America, I don't know how much you have it here, the Mickey Mouse Club. Now what the hell happens if you condition kids to join the Mickey Mouse Club? You make a bunch of pinheads. Do you understand? Kids want to know everything. How do airplanes fly? Daddy, what makes the light go on? He said, I don't know that. Daddy usually doesn't know anything, and congressmen know less. <laughs> so I'm saying everything that you have is technical. Think about it. If we took away technology, if you shut down Boulder Dam tomorrow, all the food and all the refrigerators from L.A. to San Francisco would fail. All the food would rot away. Everything that you have is technology. If you shut down the power projects, men would have to pull cars and boats. They did it in the Volga River. They had to pull freighters. Men, slaves, were whipped to do that. Slavery was normal in the old days. And kings felt that they were put here to rule over people. People in my position like to think that they're here to try to make the world a better place. Divine wisdom guides them. Look, divine wisdom doesn't guide anybody. When Christians fed the lions, they prayed like hell. The Jews in concentration camp prayed and they were burned. In Salem, Massachusetts, if a woman spoke up and she didn't quite agree with everything, she was burned alive as a witch. Now here's what you didn't know. I'm talking about the United States. Women, hundreds of them were burned alive because they thought about things, just a little different. But that what you didn't know is for every witch you found, you inherited their bank account and their land. So it was a good job looking for witches in the old days. The more you can find, the more money you got, and free. So here you have a world that's sicker than shit. And when I say that, I mean it. I mean that the world you live in is consistent of stupid people, including the military. The Pentagon in Washington think that they're there to defend the country. Whatever a man can think of, some other body can think of a way around that. You can't secure yourself. You think that you go to an airport, you put your luggage down, they x-ray it, and you're all right. I can design clothing that gives off nerve gas. There are other ways around anything a person could think of. I wouldn't do that, of course. I wouldn't work on weapons. When I was drafted in the army, the first thing they said is, can you make a bomb, Fresco, that goes sideways instead of up? I said, I have no idea how to do that. It says, cast ye not pearl before swine. People are not educated yet. They should not have weapons of mass destruction. They don't know how to use it. They should have technology that enhances all human life. This is what religion tries to do. I would say that the Venus Project is the nearest thing to the brotherhood of humanity. So I want to try to tell you a little more about people. If you were raised in Nazi Germany as a baby, if you never saw anything else, it'd be Heil Hitler. If you're raised in France, la tour Eiffel, your facial expressions, everything. If you're raised in the South in America, 
you speak with a southern accent. If I say, stop speaking with a southern accent, you can. And you'd say, well, I'm going to give me a nigger and I'm going to kick his ass. Is that you speaking or is that picked up from your environment? If you take a normal boy and bring him up with six or ten very effeminate women, women speak differently than men. They move their hands a lot and facial expressions are different, more like I'm moving now. So if you just were brought up with those women, a boy would move just like a woman. If you brought up in Italy, you say, come on, they eat, there's a good food. See, because even that is reflection. If you brought up in Germany, again, it's Deutschland over alles. If you brought up in, in any other country, you might say, you know where the person was brought up from by the way they speak. How are you, mate? You know where that guy comes from Australia. How are you, mate? Well, you'd speak that way, your facial expression would be that way, and you use words like individuality. There's no such thing. Everybody reflects their culture. If you lived in France 10 years, you moved to Germany, you lived there 10 years, you speak with a German-French accent. Not a thing you can do about it. So we reflect our culture, all of us. So when I say, think for yourself, you can't. Because you think as an American, or a Frenchman, or a German, or a Greek, or an Italian. So, really, when Germans speak, they speak when they come to this country. They speak and say, well, I give you some idea of what happened. That's the way they speak. They pick it up. It's a course between German and English. I worked for a guy named Ernst Judet, who was an ace of World War I. He shot down 71 planes. Since I worked for him, I said, how did you shoot down 71 airplanes? Maybe if he shot down five or six, that's possible. But how can you shoot down 71 airplanes? He said, what's very easy, Frasco. That's the way he spoke. He said, I would fly above the squadrons and I'd look for a rookie, a bad pilot that didn't know how, and I'd pick him off. So is he a good man? Is he kind? Is he human? Same with Teddy Rickenbacker. They always fly above the squadron and look for guys that can't fly too well and pick them off. That gives you a lot of medals, a lot of X's on your fuselage. So when you're brought up, you're brought up, so a lot of people go to church and says, thou shalt not kill. And so it's hard to get people to enlist in the army. So they give Japanese or Chinese Americans false teeth and they make a movie by Frank Capra called Why We Fight. And it shows these Japanese kids raping a woman and the enlistment goes up 75%. You have to teach hatred to have war to, build, war to be a working system. And army men, unfortunately, 10 years after the war, that's the most exciting time of their life. And they always go back and they join the American Legion and they talk about the days they shot these goddamn slanty eye bastards. And the Germans were called Krauts, not human beings. So we shot them too. See? So soldiers are killing machines. And if you want a world without war, people have to be educated to understand that all people need the same thing. Good food, healthy living, a relevant education, not killing. Because war only produces hatred over the years. They remember that you killed their kids, their parents, and they want to get even with you. And some people say to me, I'm just imitating them. Why are these goddamn North Koreans building rockets? And why are these Chinese building big armies? They're a threat to us. But again, I don't want you to take my word for this. There's a newspaper in England called The Telegraph. The London Telegraph. And in that newspaper, they ran a headline about seven years ago. The U.S. intends to bomb seven countries, nuclear bomb, sneak attack on seven countries. It names North Korea, China, all the countries we don't like. Headlined in the Telegraph. You haven't seen that, so write for it. Don't take my word for it. When you do that, if China said, we intend to bomb England, France, United States, and some other country, we were on to the tooth. That's why they're all building nuclear weapons. They're afraid of us, afraid of America.
You didn't know they ran that, so you say, why are these damn Chinese doing that? Why are these damn North Koreans doing that? They're doing because they're scared of the United States. And the United States, are their intentions good? They may be, but they're stupid people. Even if they intended to do that, they should not have released it. It was released by the Pentagon, according to the Telegraph. So there's your reason. People behave as they've been conditioned, as they manage news and turn you off from things they think you ought not to hear. Like the theory of evolution was held back for a long time. And in all the parks in America, or most of them, there are cannons, war tanks, airplanes. There should be statues of people that increase food, that did wonderful changes in medicine, wash your hands, retain cleanliness. They used to cut cadavers and then go on right on and do childbirth with surgery. And the women would die of childbirth fever. That was because they did cutting with cadavers, never washed their hands, and the doctor that told them to wash their hands was kicked out of the university because he told them to wash their hands. So who the hell are you to tell us what to do? So everything new was fought, women's rights, child labor, they used to do children in factories. Of course, it's a little before your time. But people marched to get the children out of the factories and they had rotten eggs thrown at them. When you fought for women's rights, the same thing. They had rotten eggs thrown at you. What do you mean women? Women are only good for two things, you know. So they had notions about women. You know, women can't learn to be architects and engineers. Women are just good to produce babies and cook for the old man. Well, all this crap is disappearing, but every inch of the way of progress was fought. Just remember that. Nothing comes easy. People are now producing articles about the Venus Project, because we're better known now. They said, Fresco gets his money from the Vatican, or the Rothschild family, or this banking institute. I don't have any money. Fresco has two Mercedes. I don't even have a car. So anyway, they will spread whatever rumors they have to, to keep in power. And that's what you're up against. Whenever you do anything new or different, instead of people saying, you know, that's an interesting thing, let me think about it, you know, they get mad at you because you're upsetting the apple cart. And that's what it's about. We have a tough job ahead, all of us. If you wish to live in a world without war, poverty, unemployment, hunger, human suffering, you have to talk to other people. If you do nothing, I can assure you nothing will happen. So I think I can open this portion to questions. So Roxanne and I will take questions from any one of you. Thank you again. So you want to join Anonymous? You can't not join Anonymous. Nobody can join Anonymous. Anonymous is not an organization. It is not a club, a party, or even a movement. There is no charter, no manifest, no membership fees. Anonymous has no leaders, no gurus, no ideologists. In fact, it does not even have a fixed ideology. All we are is people who travel a short distance together, much like commuters who meet in a bus or tram for a brief period of time. We have the same route, share a common goal, purpose or dislike. And on this journey together, we may well change the world. Nobody can speak for Anonymous. Nobody could say you are in, or you are out. Do you still want to join Anonymous? Well, you are in if you want to. How to get in contact with others? Anonymous has no centralized infrastructure. We use existing facilities of the internet, especially social networks, and we are ready to hop onto the next one if this one seems compromised, is under attack, or starts to bore us. At the time of this writing, Facebook, Twitter and the IRC appear to host the most active congregations. But this may change at any time. Still, these are probably the best places to get started. Look for terms like anonymous or non -ops and other keywords that might be connected to our activities. How do I recognize other anonymous? We come from all places of society. We are students, workers, clerks, unemployed. We are young or old. We wear smart clothes or rugs. We are hedonists, ascetics, joy riders or activists. We come from all races countries and ethnicities. We are many. We are your neighbors, your co-workers, your hairdressers, your bus drivers and your network administrators. We are the guy on the street with the suitcase and the girl in the bar you are trying to chat up. We are anonymous, 